Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Monday, May 9th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're somebody that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can use to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Real quick, before I get to the watch list, I first wanna personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class that I'm offering next week. So if you like what you see here and you wanna learn more about this tool, then certainly get signed up for the free class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box. If you're watching at my site, there's an area right there on the webpage that you can click to get signed up. So like I said, if you're liking what you see and you wanna learn more, certainly get signed up for the free class. Real quick, a couple of clarification points. First off, this number over here you see will still be changing around and the candlestick you see will still be changed around. That's because the market's still open for a small amount of time. So no need to go to the eye doctor. You're not going crazy. You're not seeing things. But I like to do these videos when the market's still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. And then next, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame. So for you beginners, what that means is that each one of these candlesticks here, as they're called, represents 30 minutes worth of time. So stock number one here, ticker symbol BBIG. A whole lot of talk, people talking about this one. Big volume today. And what I like most about it is how there is just such a very well-defined area headed into next week. And that area sits right up there at, let's see, what is that? $3.40. Now, let me be very clear. I'm not trying to imply that this is a great discovery. I'm not trying to imply that this is some sort of special talent that I have. The exact opposite. A bunch of people are watching that level. And I say a lot because when a lot of people are watching the same level, wondering the same thing, call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, call it whatever you want, it can produce some very dynamic movements. So while there is no such thing as a guarantee, my point here is that it is plausible to think that if the price gets up there and breaks up through that level, that that break in and of itself could create quite a bit of upwards buying pressure. Again, no guarantees, but you know, by no means is $3.40 some sort of random area that you know I'm picking out of thin air. As far as pullbacks are concerned, level that stands out for there, right down there around $3.15. You can see multiple times the price has bounced right off that level. Uh, so that'll be an interesting area to watch. And then overall, just from a pattern perspective, we have our resistance, we have our support, we have our big momentum move right there. This would be known as a bull flag pattern. So if you like bull flags, if you like this price range, then this one should definitely be on your watch list. Next one, SIDU. Very interesting setup here, mainly because of this action right here. The price finally started to go sideways. After what? After a big move to the downside. After what? Well, after a big gap up. So do you kind of get the idea here of what happened today? Big gap up, so a lot of interest. Big move down, but then it started to go sideways. Now, don't get me wrong, and I wish I could say trading was this easy. Just because the price started to go sideways does not mean that for sure guaranteed this is the bottom and that for sure guaranteed the price is headed back upwards. My point, again, goes back to is it plausible? Is it valid to think that, okay, Maybe this pullback is finally over. Maybe the price is leveling out here for a potential move back to the upside. Yes, that is not guaranteed, but a plausible thought process to have, especially as I speak. Last 30 minutes here, good solid green candle. So we'll see if that leads to anything further moving into next week. But key level here that I think a lot of people will be watching is the top part of this little sideways range. And that sits right here at $3.40. So 340 is gonna be an important area of resistance. And then as far as support is concerned, I won't even draw a line in there. We'll just use that pink line, which represents the very well-known, the very famous 200 period moving average. So that'd be more so the bottom of this sideways channel here. But yeah, if you like to play these situations where there's big gaps up and then there's like a lot of chaos and then all of a sudden the price starts to go sideways and you can throw out the question of, huh, maybe maybe the panic is finally over. Maybe some sort of bottom is finally being formed. Then this would definitely belong on your watch list. Next one, AMC, a very rough day on this one here, especially that opening 30 minutes. I mean, really set itself behind the eight ball during that opening 30 minutes, big move back uh, to the downside. It did try to fight and did do a good job, but ultimately just was, was too much downwards pressure and rolled right back over, uh, you know, so overall ending the week in a pretty disappointing fashion. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that level. And first update now is just based on a foundational rule in charting, which states when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance. So now the newest near-term level of support right there, or excuse me, of resistance, that former support is right there at $14.15. If the price does break up through there, next key level to watch after that would be that purple line there, the 50 period moving average. Uh, so, I mean, don't get me wrong, if the price gets up there and pushes up through that level, that's definitely a good thing. But I, I'm just saying, don't get too excited because the price would then have to do battle with that 50 period moving average, which isn't too far away. As far as areas of support are concerned, nothing fancy here, just a question of well, where did the bleeding finally stop today? And that was right down there at $13.50. So for that reason, that reason alone is gonna be where that, that main area of technical support is headed into next week. But yeah, overall, rough way to end the week. 
Next one here, PLTR, very popular stock out there. And like AMC, that opening 30 minutes really set it back quite a bit. Did try to bounce and then rolled back over. But what's interesting here is maybe some sort of double bottom pattern. Now, of course, no guarantees, as I've said, and we'll probably say a half dozen more times. But if you can honor risk, if you can incorporate stop losses and risk management into your strategy, then you have a very nice risk first reward scenario here because maybe this is not the double bottom and this thing is just gonna continue to collapse. Well, that's why stop losses exist. Very minimal risk, you can control it. Now, what happens if it bounces? Well, then who knows how high a bounce could go. Now, again, no guarantees it will bounce, but nobody can accuse you of saying this $9.45 mark is some sort of random area on the chart. No, it already has a track record now of a couple different you know, bottoming points there. So it's not irrational to think that it could bounce from that area. Again, if you're not a disciplined trader, if you don't even know what a stop loss is, I mean, well, you shouldn't even be trading in the first place, but that's another discussion. Then, you know, these sorts of situations are not for you, but if you are disciplined, then, you know, you can definitely structure yourself a very worthwhile and a very logical risk versus reward scenario, especially on a very popular stock where people are looking for any reason at all to buy and any excuse at all to buy. So we'll see if this is some sort of double bottom forming or not. Next one here, AMD, good overall day, especially considering how the overall markets uh, once again had a pretty rough day. Uh, but overall, this will mean a bit more to those of you that watched the video previously, but talked about that resistance trend line right there. And uh, congratulations to anybody that bought that breakout right there of that trend line, got yourselves a nice move. Price did pull back, but the interesting part is after that breakout and pullback, where did it pull back to? I'm just gonna get rid of that level. And it pulled back to the power of chart. I mean, look at that, you can't make this stuff up. It bounced literally right off that purple line, the 50 period moving average. Now, does that gonna happen every single time? Of course not. But our tool is a valuable, worthwhile tool to use to help make good, rational decisions. Absolutely, and here is just a, a, a grade A example of that right there. So point here being that 50 period moving average, which you know did a good job of providing support there, and then of course right there, is gonna be that main near-term level of support on any sort of deeper pullbacks. The more important level will be that pink line, the 200 period moving average, valid, we'll just call it at the $91 mark. As far as the areas of resistance are concerned, still have the main overall level right up there at the $100 mark, potentially a little near-term one right here at the $98 mark, but I'm not even gonna put that in there permanently because uh, I'll just focus on the main overarching level is up there at 100. But like I said, all things considered today, I would say this one had a pretty good day. Next one here, NIO, which is essentially sitting right here at this green line that I talked about previously as support. But now that we have a bit more data, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this area down. But take note of the direction that's, you know, the support is needing to be adjusted in the downwards direction, not an ideal situation. Now, if I'm needing to adjust supports in the upwards direction from a bullish point of view, well, that, that, that's a very good adjustment. But when levels of support are being adjusted downwards, not nearly as good, uh, but like I said, now that we have more data, it seems as though the buyers are, are currently hanging right around that $14.70 mark, so keep a close eye on that. And I'm also gonna go ahead and adjust this area of resistance now down to that level right there at $15.70, so keep a close eye on that. Uh, but like the other ones I've talked about, even if the price is able to come up here and break up through that initial area of resistance, you still gotta be skeptical because not that far away, you know, looming overhead is that 50 period moving average. So like you said, I'm not implying that a break of that red line is like some sort of bad thing or something that shouldn't be considered bullish because it should. I'm just saying don't get too bullish about it because you still do have a lot more work that needs to be done right there at that 50 period moving average. And then just to offer up a bit more context, you can see that if that level is broken, uh, then the next key overall support down there right around the $14 mark. Next one here, SNDL, and this just continues to drift lower and lower. In fact, it's now broken down through the bottom part of this channel right here at 46, uh, which to offer up a little bit context, a, a very bearish day because of that, not because it was red, but because this channel here had been doing a good job over the past week and a half. But as I showed today, the price is pushed down through there. And then a classic example of this area of support, which would now be considered a level of resistance. And that is exactly how things played out. So you can see price broke below it, tried several times to get back above it right there. It could never quite do it. Um, not that it can never be done in the you know in the future, but you know I'm just saying it makes sense why the price is all of a sudden now starting to struggle at that 46 cent mark. So I'll go ahead and zoom back in, get rid of that level up there as it served its purpose for now. So near term 46 cents, and then as I've talked about with these other ones, next level of resistance would be that 50 period moving average, which you can see is actually ordered uh, acted as resistance a couple of times before. Uh, but like I said, before you even worry about doing battle with that one, first level is going to be that 46 cent mark. As far as next potential areas of support are concerned, next level would be, and I realize we're going way back in the charts history, but coming from down there at 45 cents, which you can see 
right there is coming from, let's see, when was that? Back there in mid-March. So been a long time since the price been down around this area, but we'll see what happens next week. There we go. Next one, SOFI. And this is a, a very interesting level because I think the point that a lot of people are watching and the point that could certainly break the spirits of quite a few people are right here at $6.35. I mean, if you look at it and to give full credit or credit sue, Bulls did a good job of providing support, price bounce. Once again, providing support, price bounce. And right there, once again, provided support, price bounce. So to reiterate, no guarantees, but I don't think anybody would be shocked that if the price were to go down to 635 and then break down below it, that that's gonna trigger a bunch of people waving the white flag saying, you know what, I'm done with it. And why would they feel that way? Well, at that point, that's essentially putting the price right back inside of that range where it already was. And just emotionally speaking, people don't wanna see their prices going right back to where they were. They're just, all right, I'm done with it, I'm going on. So again, doesn't mean that that's for sure gonna happen, but it goes back to, is that at least a plausible scenario? Uh, I, I believe it is. So 635, definitely a very important level of support. If there are any attempted bounces, key area right now is this pretty nasty downwards trend line right there. But you can see that it's done a good job of forecasting where the sellers have been. Uh, but overall, 635, I think that's going to be the most important level going into next week. Next one here, FUBO. And very interesting, and I don't mean to say it the obvious, but just to set context, was absolutely brutal with the big gap down and then dropped all the way here. But to give credit or credit to, did start to bounce in the upwards direction, which leads to the valid question of, okay, is this bounce the start of something bigger? And I have no idea, but that's a great thing about charts is they allow you to answer that question and make it very straightforward. In my mind, it's all about $3.10. Why is that important? Well, if this is the start of something bigger, well, then the price is gonna keep on getting better and better. Or in other words, the price is gonna show signs of progress. But again, okay, Clay, show signs of progress. Those are just words. But that's why I love charts is because they allow you to take words and then make them very visual. So when I say show signs of progress, I mean right there at $3.10. And not that the price is gonna do this, but for example sake, if the price comes on there, bounces around and then heads back up, what would you have at that point? You would have a set of lows right there, you would have a set of lows right there. And if you envision those as stair steps, you now have stair steps progressing in the upwards direction. And that's the name of the game. That's what a truly strong move is gonna do. It's gonna make progress. And in this situation, quote unquote, progress being defined as $3.10. So keep an eye on that. And really, as long as the price starts to build those higher stair steps, that's what's gonna matter the most. In terms of potential problem areas, Definitely have some sellers sitting up there right around $3.45, so keep an eye on that. But overall, a very quality bounce today. Now the big question mark moving forward is can this continue to show signs of progress? Let's see what next week has to offer. Next one, TSLA Tesla, another wild ride and one where we have yet another very, very straightforward data point. And that is right here at 848. You can see that the price has bounced off there once, twice, and then essentially three times today. So like, I don't remember what that was. Um, anyways, I don't remember what, what I'm looking, was that SN, no, SOFI maybe? But anyways, point being, a lot of people are gonna be watching that one. Yeah, I think SOFI with that $6.25 mark, a lot of people are gonna be watching that level. And if the price does come down there, and breaks down below it, again, no guarantees, but in my mind, it's rational, it's plausible to think that that could create momentum to the downside. But it's also rational, it's also plausible to think, well, what happens if the price comes down here and it bounces again? Again, I, I can see that happening too. And that's why risk management matters because somebody's gonna be right, somebody's gonna be wrong about that area. But the idea here of a watch list is that is an interesting area. So let's watch it, hence a watch list, and see what happens regarding it. If there are any attempted bounce, bounces to the upside, key level to keep a very close eye on right there at, let's call it $890. Let me check this out multiple times back on Thursday, and then multiple times this morning on Friday. So a bunch of breakup players will be watching that level. And it's another one of those, you know, we can call it type self-fulfilling price uh, prophecy type areas. But overall, those will be the two main levels I'll be watching for Monday on Tesla. That wraps up the top 10. Again, if you like what you saw here and you wanna learn more about this tool, how it can be used to help build consistency as a trader, then certainly get signed up for the free class. Like I said, it'll be next week, Thursday, May, 20, uh, May 12th, excuse me, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy this content, if you would like for me to continue to put in the time and effort to create these watch lists and get these videos out to you, please help me out with some basic feedback. Give me a, a like button and then leave a simple comment below. Say hi, tell me, what you're, tell me what you're doing this weekend. Tell me what you're watching for next week. But those two things communicate to me that you enjoy. And as long as I know people are enjoying, I will continue to put in the time and effort uh, to create these sorts of videos. So everybody take care, have a good weekend. And like I said, if you like what you saw here, then I hope to see you at that live class next week.